Hello, good evening and welcome back to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral. And welcome to my soggy attic uh, as we get ready for, quite frankly, the dampest Champions Day uh, on record. A storm Babbitt uh, lashes the country up and down, uh, but we still, in theory, have six wonderful races to get stuck into at Ascot tomorrow. Uh, but uh, we've switched track uh, some horses uh, uh, haven't even uh, bothered to uh, to turn up after being entry entered into the the races this week, but uh, it would be rather rich of me uh, to criticise any horses for not turning up at Ascot tomorrow, as uh, every train after midday out of Leeds has been cancelled, cancelled, and cancelled. Or was this my plan? All along, as we promised you that if we got enough likes during the York e meeting, that Mr. Tom Siegel would come into the Racing Post studio. Uh, and we'll find out in a second if that has come true. But all the big names uh, in theory will be turning up tomorrow. We've got Caprios, we got your Paddingtons, we got your Tahiras, we got your Mosterdafs, uh, we got your Trushans, uh, and we've got everyone's favourite horse, uh, of course, in the shape of Rafe Beckett's Kinross. Uh, and some nice types in the Balmoral as well, uh, or the uh, uh, the getting out stakes. Uh, if uh, Shelley uh, last year is anything to go by this season, uh, it could be a big price winner uh, on the cards in the finale. Uh, but like I said, I'm stuck in Leeds. Uh, we're live and interactive, so make sure you get in touch on the chat. Uh, and uh, hello to everyone who is already saying hello. Uh, Duncan Evans, Cheese, Mark Page, Gavin Pryor, Robert Stewart, Jonathan Sherritt, uh, and everyone else uh, but uh, let's go to the studio shall we uh, uh where <laughs> i'm thrilled to announce that mr paul keely and mr tom siegel have, uh, have turned up and <laughs> tom this was my plan all along to get you into the studio uh, and to stay at home myself how are you doing buddy ross ross where are you ross i come all this way and you never turned up where are you <laughs> soft <laughs> soft northern as a eh? bit of rain hey eh? stay indoors <laughs> Look at oh, you Put two. your wellies on. Come on, get down here. Look at this. You could see us in the scrum, couldn't you, in the old rugger. Yeah, it's been lovely down here today, <laughs> by the way. Sun's been shining. It's been nice and warm. This is this is a very, very surreal experience indeed. Uh, Tom Siegel and Paul Keeley in the studio next to each other. Tweedledee and Tweedledum of the, uh, the tipping world uh, reunited once again. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't even bother to turn up. I'm going to prove it to you, though. This is the uh, so here you go, Mr. Tom Siegel. This was the the final the final train I could have possibly got uh, before uh, to actually make it into the uh, the studio. Uh, but uh, by that point, I'd already spent twenty quid on taxis to go into town and come back again. This is your fault. You said Storm Babbitt would ruin this. <laughs> well, ruin, all right for you, isn't it? Like sat at home in your lovely sort of <laughs> would I call that mustard mustard coloured uh, backwash there, Ross? I think it's a it's a deep, rich. Uh, it's like a, like a barbecued corn on the cob. That's what I'm going for. Fair enough. <laughs> each to job. each to their own. Each to their own. That's true. I mean, I mean, at least I decided I'd call it Tom. You still got the paint samples of yours at home, so. <laughs> true. Still haven't got round to painting it. Three years on. <laughs> I've painted half of mine. I'll get the uh, the top bit done eventually. Uh, but uh, David Stevens uh, also. Uh, where are you? Are you at home, David? Well, I too am north of Watford, so I can vouch for the weather being absolutely foul in the northern part of England at the moment. But listen, I'm just ripping up all the form study I've done because we had the first odds defying result of the day already with Tom turning up in the studio. So lovely to see you both. Very few men can get away from wearing a le short sleeved yellow lemon shirt. But Kills, you are proving that it is possible. Uh, looking very summery down there. Um, yeah, listen, Champions Day, six days. We move on to the inner track. No great surprise, I don't think. Uh, that's had one particular impact on the market for the Champions Day, which we'll come on to later. But let's kick off very quickly with a couple of price boosts, of course, for the duration of the live show, as always. Starting off in the long-distance cup, Trushan is 15-8, to 8, but he'll be 5-2 to 2 for the duration of this live show. And Kim Ross, of course, probably Frankie de Tori's best chance for a winner tomorrow. He's currently 13 to 8, but again, for the duration of this live show, up to 20 quid, 2 to 1. So, True Shannon Kinross, two old favourites, bidding for repeat wins, the subjects of our price boosts. Lovely stuff. Uh, True Shannon Kinross, then, yeah, some, uh, some old favourites. We've got some old favourites. Well, what, 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 uh, first things first, uh, Mr. Siegel. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of chat about the ground. There's going to be a lot of chat about the, the moving from one course to the other. I presume that your answer is it's all cods wallop and you're going to ignore that and just go straight for the form book. 
Well, yeah, of course, the form book's the most thing. Kiels will tell you, he played golf today. It has been pretty warm today. Uh, it's been 16, 17, 18 degrees here. We haven't had, I live on the, I live half an hour, 20 minutes from Ascot. We haven't had any rain today. Uh, I think there's some forecast overnight. Kiels will probably be better. He's a better weatherman than me. I thought that had disappeared as well. But that's actually. disappeared I mean, as well. I so I don't think it will be any, I don't think it will be the quagmire conditions everyone's telling me it's going to be especially now, now they've moved the track. Uh, I think it'll still be soft, of course, because we had loads of rain last night, but I don't think it'll be, put it like this, I'm not sure it'll be Vadream weather, put it like that, or Vadream ground. I don't think it's going to be anywhere near heavy unless they get no, rain it tomorrow. It just looks like scattered showers in the morning. That's... They're hit and miss as well, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, so you might get nothing tomorrow, and tomorrow, that, yeah. that, that straight track dries quicker than, you know, we, what, remember, look at Newmarket last weekend. You know what I mean? We were all sitting there going, it's definitely going to be heavy, it's definitely going to be heavy. It was, faster on the second day than it was on the first people are telling me and that was after loads of rain these tracks like Newmarket and Ascot water goes straight through so I'm not I'm not expecting it to be terrible unless the rain comes tomorrow. It's going to be soft on a straight track but you wouldn't be surprised if there was you know more good than good to soft on, on that inner course because you know John Gosden was saying that it was good good to firm in places on Monday and they've had all that rain but if it's been warm today they don't get any tomorrow it ain't gonna be that bad. Okay, there we go. Fair enough then. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at my screen right now. It says good to soft on the uh, the inner course and uh, and soft on the straight. But yeah, it might not be uh, absolutely uh, terrible ground. But we'll get stuck into uh, to Ascot in just a, uh, a second. Like I said, get your thoughts and feelings and selections. I've got uh, the world's biggest chat box right here. I can uh, interact with. In fact, I don't need you to. I don't really need you to. I can just do this show on my own in my uh, in my attic, quite frankly. Uh, but uh, why don't you pop off home, Tom, while we uh, while we play? Don't this you after. start, Briley. I've come all this way and you couldn't even turn up. <laughs> Here's an ad. <laughs> Champions Day, uh, we uh, might well get very soft ground on the straight course. It might not be too bad on the round course, uh, three on each, of course. Uh, and uh, we start off uh, with the, the long distance uh, cup uh, where Kiprios uh, makes his uh, 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 his uh, uh, return to, to this track after uh, that uh, impressive win at Royal Ascot last year. He looked like he was going to be the dominant force in this division. Uh, but of course, uh, horses aren't machines and all that. Uh, and uh, the injury has put pay to to his uh, potential for this season. But uh, he probably needed to run behind Eldar, Elder of last time out. Uh, and he's sure to be fit and ready and raring to go uh, for this assignment. He's 5-4. to four, Trushan 15-8. to eight, Coltrane is 15-2. to two, Sweet William 9-1. to one, Trollum and 10s. 40-1. Broom Stratum is 66-1. to one, uh, And Maxi Dent. Uh, who uh, is a, uh, a racehorse, not a toothpaste, that he's turned up for the Long Distance Cup for some reason at 125 to 1 to have a nice spin round uh, and uh, and see the best part of uh, 40 lengths uh, to Kiprios' backside, I imagine, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Siegel. But we start off with you, uh, Kiprios, of course. Um, it hasn't gone particularly well for him uh, this year, but as we've seen uh, the, uh, at Goodwood, at Ascot, at York, the staying division has, uh, has somewhat missed him. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, when you say he hasn't gone particularly well, hasn't gone well at all, has it? <laughs> no particular about it, Ross. Uh, he, he, I'm, Aidan O'Brien on the, on the interview said he had to teach him how to canter again. He was so, so bad uh, at the start of the season. He thought there's no chance he'd get him back this season, but he did. I think on last year's form, he's likely his head of these. I mean, he's a proper top class there. It's just whether he comes back to that form. I thought his run in the RS St. Jorge was perfectly reasonable for a comeback run. I think if he's anywhere near his old self, he'll win. But that's what you're betting on. You're betting five to four about Kiprios coming back. Trushan, I'm not worried. I don't think the ground's an issue for him. I think you it was know, good to firm in France. It was good to firm time, in France, wasn't it? And he was it as good as ever. Good to soft on a car, but it wasn't. Exactly. When have you ever seen firm on a French mm. card? Uh, it's crazy. Coltrane ran really badly last time. It might have come too soon for him, but I was really disappointed with that. Sweet William. I thought he should have won the Ebor, and I thought he should have won the Doncaster Cup, and he won, won neither. Uh, Broom is a horse to keep getting sucked into, and Stratum and Max didn't have no chance. I thought the, the interesting one at the prices might be Trawlerman for Frankie Tatori. He was third in the race last year. Not far behind an inform Kiprios. I thought at the prices he was the one provided all eight turn up each way uh, of the two at the top. That's a toss-up job. 
I, I, I don't know. I don't really want to back either of them at those prices. So I'll probably back Trawler Man each way. OK. Um, Kiels, I mean, the, the thing is, though, is Coltrane, I'm going to throw Coltrane at you because I'm pretty sure he's priced up on the fact that everyone thinks, well, he won't like the ground. It's going to be really testing. It's going to be really soft. Should he be 15 to 2 if it's... If it's not as bad as well, you, uh, I think it's, it's, I think, I think it's partly factored into that he ran a really bad race last time, and it's very unlike him, isn't it? I mean, it was similar. It was similar ground last year, wasn't it? In fact, it'll probably be quicker this year than it was last. Um, so I don't know whether that's factored in or not. I know that some of the prices have changed about um, bigger priced ones. Now we've realised that we're not. It's not going to be dreadful because Trawler Man was twenties yesterday, uh, and he's obviously a massive player if it isn't really, really soft. So. Um, yeah, he'd be of interest. I mean, this is the one race I'm not really going to have a bet in. Um, I, I wasn't 100% certain about Kipios last time, to be honest. I mean, he was 4-6. or six. He has won first time out every time he's raced until this year. And, you know, I know they said he, he works lazy, but he looked lazy. He looked a bit disinterested halfway through, I thought, last time. So, so jury's out on him. And I just, you know, Chris Pro, yeah, sorry, Truchan is going for his fourth consecutive win in the race, isn't he? Well, you know, he loves the place. He's back in form. If I was going to have a bet, it would probably be him. I respect Trawlerman each way. Probably the most important horse for each way punters out there is that Maxi Dent, because if he does line up with zero chance whatsoever, <laughs> you've got your eight runners, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, OK, Kipros then 5-4, to four, Trushan 15-8. to eight. And, I mean, he's only seven years old, Kiel's Trushan, as well. I mean, if he was a if he was a novice chaser, he'd be ready to peak right now, wouldn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he did look like he'd gone first two starts this season, but the wind ops clearly worked, hasn't it? Uh, you know, I was expecting a bit more from Sweet William um, last time. I know, he, you know, I know he wasn't beaten far, but it's now it's now twice where he's had to come off the bridle and he's got beat. You know, we're doing everything so easily, isn't he? That he, worries me a little bit about him. Yeah, he hung a bit, didn't he, last time? It looked like he was certain to win at Doncaster, and he sort of looked like he nearly hit the rail. You know, he, he hung right into the rails and didn't look like he really went through with it. But look, he's a good horse. He, won't mind what the ground is. We saw that at Newbury that he doesn't mind what the ground is. So, I mean, he's a good horse, but I prefer Trawlerman of the two, I think, of the Gosden two. OK, Trawlerman is a 10 to 1 shot, so Sweet William is a 9 to 1 shot. Uh, hello to everyone watching. Uh, Kiprios Coltrane forecast, says uh, Jack Dawson. Uh, uh, how on earth is Trushan not favourite, says Alex LFC. Uh, why is Coltrane almost four times bigger than Trushan, says Jonathan Sherritt. Uh, I'm going by uh, Last Race of Doncaster, underestimated and very insulting. Uh, yeah, I mean, Coltrane at Ascot, uh, first second, first second. So he absolutely, he loves the trackers almost as much as Trushan, not quite as much. Trawlerman does it once off, so Stevens 99. Uh, and uh, uh, Tommy Hampson says, well done, Ross, stitch Tom right up. So uh, <laughs> Where's cheese, stuff. Ross? Where's cheese? Jesus here. Uh, he's uh, he picked the the colour for my uh, for my office as well. So uh, <laughs> good big shout out to Cheese. Uh, but uh, speaking of Cheese, can you pick any holes, David Stevens, in what we've just been talking about for this long distance trip? No, listen. The, the the guys have said it, haven't they? Kit Prios on last season's form is by far the best. It'd be no surprise to see him move on from that Irish St. Ledger reappearance. Um, Aidan O'Brien more than capable of getting the necessary improvement. Just it'd be interesting to see how Holly Dora rides through Shannon. Obviously, at Doncaster, she gave up the unequal struggles and just went off with him. And then in the Cadran, again, she dictated. If she tries to, I suppose, dictate it here, will Broom maybe keep him company and then try and set it up for Kiprios? Um, Coltrane, I know connections are worried about the ground. And he has got to bounce back from a disappointing run last time. I agree with Tom. I thought Trawler Man was the interesting one each way. But that said, I can't see... Him actually being good enough to beat either of the front two, but again, it's a bit of a toss of the coin. Do you, do you want to back really? You're back in Aidan O'Brien at five to four to get this horse back. You're back in Trushan at a track and a, a race he absolutely loves. At the prices, I'd probably just side with Trushan, but it'll be interesting to see how Holly Doyle rides him. Yeah, okay then. Now, Trushan 15 to eight shot. Uh, and if there is a to date runners and the ground isn't that uh, bad, I do think that 15 to two about Coltrane is a little bit big, but uh, yeah, with uh, with not quite knowing how the ground's going to go, with not knowing we're going to get a dead eight keels, with not knowing how many horses are going to actually turn up tomorrow, it's a hard race to to put a strong selection in, isn't it? But uh, what were your what, what's your thoughts before we move on to the yeah, next? Yeah, I just favour Trusha, and I am not playing in the race myself though. Okay, and uh, and Tom. Uh, it'd be interesting how the market goes with Kiprios. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to be well back tomorrow if he's. If, I think I think they're really quite keen on him. So I think Kiprios is a better horse than Trushan, but I like Trawlerman each way. OK, lovely stuff. Trawlerman is a 10 to 1 shot. And David? Yeah, it's an interesting point actually Tom makes. If, if they do back Kiprios, that would speak volumes. But the prices as they currently are, 
I'd go for True Shan. And of course, he is the price boost for the rest of this show at five to two. OK, there you go. Get involved on that uh, price boost. Uh, and Jim Stanton said the ground's going to be Gouda firm, which I think is a cheese joke. Cheese uh, related uh, pun. <laughs> cheese related pun. Yeah, it was it was tortured, which means I absolutely love it, Jim. Absolutely love it. Ten out of ten. It's better wow. than yours. That's for sure, Ross. It is. It is indeed. Uh, I mean, the advantage of being here is I could I could just get, I don't know, Bob Monkhouse's joke book out of the, uh, the drawer over there and, uh, and go through it. But uh, instead of that, let's move on, shall we, to the uh, the 150 at Ascot tomorrow at the uh, the Champion Sprint, uh, where uh, Kinross is 13 to 8, uh, Vadrine 13 to 2, Rohan 8 to 1, Millstream 9 to 1, Sandrine 9 to 1, Sense of Duty 10 to 1, Spycatcher 12 to 1, Run to Freedom uh, at 18 to 1. Uh, and uh, as for those uh, at uh, bigger prices, we've got Ocean Quest, we've got Art Power, Swing Along, St. Lawrence, Magical Sunset and Macarova. Uh, but uh, as we said, everyone's favourite racehorse in the shape uh, of Kinross, uh, who, again, is only six years old, but it feels like he's been racing uh, for the best part of a decade. Uh, and uh, he uh, uh, he should be right at home, six furlong, soft ground uh, at Ascot. But um, Keels, he is everyone's favourite racehorse. We absolutely love him. He's a, an incredible performer. It is bizarre, isn't it, for a horse of his ability that he's only ever won two group ones uh, that tells you more about the seven furlong campaign than anything else but um are you on the kim ross bandwagon uh, uh tomorrow uh is your or is your head saying that we can take your heart on here uh, i'm not i'm not this year I'm, I, I do love him and it wouldn't surprise me if he wins he's obviously easily the most likely winner i don't think he's been as dominant this year as he was last coming into it and he was a bigger price last year wasn't he so uh, obviously we know a bit more about him now although you know we should have known enough about him last year to, for, for him to have been uh, shorter than I think it was six to one the night before the race last year. He went off threes. Um, he's the most likely winner for sure. Um, whether he's quite the same horse as he was last year, I'm not 100 percent certain. I I could see the case for the dream at a double figure price, but I'm wondering whether she's actually got the quality for this sort of race. She was 80 to one in the race last year. Remember, I know she she's been in better form this year, but uh, not 100 percent certain about uh, about her. And you know, just sort of just sort of one that could. The one that could improve dramatically off her first run this season was Sense of Duty, who last year just looked like the real coming force in in, uh, in, in sprinting. She absolutely destroyed Anaf, who has won two big um, sprints this year and is rated 110 now. Uh, and uh, yeah, she, she she beat him by four and a half lengths at Newcastle. It looked like the further she went, the better she got. Uh, she's had all sorts of problems, little fractures, etc., uh, and came back on heavy ground at Newbury uh, for a five furlong race. Um, the only thing I'd say about that is, it, one, she she desperately needed to run. William Haggis said as much, and she doubled in price uh, before the off. Uh, and if you were going to run a, over a different trip than six furlongs, um, it would have been seven furlongs for me because she clearly stays very well. And I, I just thought it, it, it was the trip was wrong. She, it was badly needed. Trainer says she's come on a lot for it. He's been desperate to get her to this race. And, you know, he doesn't say that if he just wants to come for a day out. I think she's, gonna, I think she's capable of running a massive race. OK, there you go. Uh, Sense of Duty then is a, a 10 to 1 shot uh, for a yard or end in the season in pretty good uh, form. Yeah, Badgering, the prices have gone, Tom, uh, to an extent. Obviously, uh, Kim Ross. I mean, the interesting thing about Kim Ross is um, <laughs> we've been saying all year we don't know if he's, he's necessarily back to his best or he just hasn't had his conditions. He's finally got his conditions today and he's been winning those races anyway. Yeah, I'm not convinced he's that conditions orientated, Ross, to be honest. He's run loads of good races on firm ground. He was third in a Breeders' Cup mile on firm ground, wasn't he? Uh, I was just disappointed with him last time. I just thought he never travelled. He never looked like the same Kinross I was expecting. I know he got hampered close home and he might have won without that. But I thought it was a really weak race. I mean, Colleen has been lapped in a few, few times before. Uh, I'm with Keels. I think he's plenty short enough. I'd, I'd love him to win, but he's plenty short enough for what he's showing. I don't really think that dreams in any sort of betting proposition now at 13 to two. Got to wait and see the ground. If it if it belts down, then maybe she's a, she's got a chance. But at the moment, no, not for me. Rohan could bounce back, given he's got such a great record at uh, Ascot, hasn't he? But I'm with either. I, I'm, I'm with Keels. I, I I like betting backing horses that I think could win by a long way or are other class of the field. I don't like sort of, if I get into the minutiae of it, where well, this one could win if it's got, you know, if everything goes right or whatever, I get, I get in trouble. But sense of duty could be just a lot better than these. You know, we've seen this year that the sprinters aren't great, are they? You know, handicappers, regional, uh, living the dream, have won group one races. 
They're not brilliant, any of them. And Kinross wasn't beating lots of the good ones. You know, it was a good race last year. It wasn't a brilliant race. It wasn't a sprint that you'd come back and say, oh, that was a wonderful six furlong sprint. So I don't think the, the, the form is that great of any of them. And I think if there's one horse that could bash the ball out of the park, it's Sense of Duty. I mean, she beat Anna five lengths, four and a half lengths at, at, at Newcastle last year. Anna was third in the King stand. You know, she's, that form puts her right in with it. The other one I quite like is Spy Catcher. Because I think six furlongs on soft ground is what he wants. If you go back to the French race, which I'm never going to remember its name, the seven furlong French race, John Pratt, is it? I don't know. But uh, uh, she, he couldn't lose that race a furlong out. And he probably was in front after the line as well. So that was over seven. I think six furlong on soft ground will suit him. He's run well at Ascot before. I think he was fourth in the Victoria Cup. I like horses that stay a bit further at Ascot. And I think he could run well, but I'm not sure he's got the upside of Sense of Duty. So I'm with my lemon-shirted friend here. I think Sense of Duty is going to go well. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Uh, it was the, uh, the Maurice de Geest. Maurice oh, de yeah. Geest, that's the one. Six and a half furlongs. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, quite a few other horses to throw at you. I mean, uh, one is, is Rohan, who won his side in this race last year. I mean, the, the first three home came down the... Uh, with the high numbers on the near side, and he was on his own on the other side. Um, and I think he's been set up perfectly, hasn't he, with that win last time out. And he, uh, again, he's another horse. He's only five years old because he, he he had that incredible season where he just kept running and winning and running and winning for about nine months. Uh, it feels like, again, he's he's uh, he's over the hill a little bit. But I, I feel like the connections have targeted this race this season where it, it didn't feel like they have in the uh, in the past few years. Um, you've also got Millstream, who's two from two in group races on soft ground as well. Sandrine likes bad ground. And then there's two at bigger prices, guys. I'm just going to throw at you. Um, one is Ocean Quest, who ran in the Commonwealth Cup and bolted up on bad ground earlier in the year. But the one that looks a bit big to be is Run to Freedom, who was second to Kim Ross last year. And it's 150 to one. But again, 13 to eight Kim Ross, 18 to one Run to Freedom. Ground should be all right from the family of Twilight Sun, of course, as well. Second to Shaquille at Newmarket. This horse always gets ignored in the market. Yeah, yeah, I can I, I can agree with that. She, he, um, you know, he, he did run an absolute cracker uh, behind Shaquille. Um, I, th I think this the thing is they're, they're all much of a muchness, really, and you could make a case for the bigger ones being shorter and the shorter ones being bigger, couldn't you? I think uh, I, I think there's an argument for that. But you know, I mean, my genuine feeling is I don't think they they are that good. Mm. Uh, you know, so you know, like Tom said, we're looking for the one that could blow them away. I mean, Millstream, Millstream's got plenty of promise, I think. Like you know, and he could st he he could still go up. I mean, he's one of the higher rated horses in the race, isn't he? He's a better horse than the Dream, for instance. So he, you know, he could be he could be a serious player. But uh, no, I you know I, I'm I'm sticking with Sense of Joy, but I do get your argument. Uh, and just one more thing to mention: is there because sometimes at Ascot, I mean, it's been a funny year at Ascot. I feel there's some races where or some meetings where front runners have just dominated. Well, it doesn't seem a, a lot of pace on. No, it's true. Kim Ross made it last year, didn't he, on his side. I mean, it's funny. It's always funny at Ascot, isn't it? I mean, you remember this race last year. Kim Ross made, made all on his side, uh, which was the near side. Uh, and I think, I think the first, at least the first two uh, were that side. And then they ignored that side for the entire rest of the straight track races. Uh, and all 20 runners went all the way over to the far side uh, in the Balmoral. So who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, last year, last year's uh, draws were 17, 14, 13, the first three home. Year before, uh, 5, 2 and 4. So uh, it is, yeah, it's a bit of a guessing game in that regard. Uh, but uh, David Stevens, what do you got for us here? Price boost, extra places, uh, strong opinions? We've got our Kinross price boost, obviously. Uh, two to one about that. We've got four places each way. Look, it'd be no surprise, obviously, if Kinross goes and wins this race again. But I think at 13 to 8, he's got to be taken on, particularly with that extra place each way. Um, the dream, the price has absolutely collapsed all week as the rain came down. Ironically, may not be that soft tomorrow, although on the straight tr track probably still will be pretty soft. But his price has long gone. Rohan has shortened today as well. They're booking a Ryan Moore there on a course he loves so well. But the two I like each way are Millstream, uh, won a Group 3 in Deauville on, on soft ground and then wasn't disgraced when six in the Sprint Cup. And Sandrine, who is closely matched to uh, the favourite on a few pieces of form, one well at Doncaster last time. She's around nine, ten to one as well. Four places each way. So maybe a couple against it. But yeah, look, this the market says this is Frankie's best chance of a Champions Day winner. So he'll be popular, I'm sure, Kinross anyway. 
Yeah. I was going to say, do we have a, a a price, David, on Frankie to win all five tomorrow? Everyone put them in multiples and this show will not be on the air for the jump season because uh, Carl will get taken to the cleaners. <laughs> F- funny enough, I did put that to the traders, but for that very reason, joking apart, reluctant to offer a special price about all five because plenty of people will back all five tomorrow. This is the last chance, potentially, to back Frankie to Tory at Ascot. And there'll be loads of Ackers. Uh, we're seven to two from three to one that he rides two or more winners. We're 20 to one, he rides three or more. But yeah, the five time, I mean, genuinely would be would be biblically bad for us. So yeah, a um, couple of winners, fine, but no more than that, Frankie. Yeah, okay. So actually, what's the, you, you, yeah, a price reduction potentially for all five, a price cut on the, uh, on the ACA. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's going to be headlines uh, for Frankie, uh, Tom and Gilles, regardless of what happens uh, tomorrow. Um, it's... Uh, I don't know. It's, it, it, it gives us a flying dismount for every big winner. It's quite hard to to pick out a particular the Tory uh, the Tory memory. But um, have you been on the right side of any, Tom? Well, I hope I've. He's had nearly how many thousand winners? I've hope I've had a few of them. <laughs> uh, uh, no, the obviously the thing that stands out to me is, is the seven, isn't it? That's that's the, that's the day he'll always be remembered for. You know, that was just ridiculous. He was winning on horses that had no chance. We gave Decorated Hero a particularly good ride that day. There we go. There you go. That's a lovely one. Um, I mean, I, again, it's, I'm, I'm terrible at this stuff because people, oh, what's your favourite Frankie memory? And if it's not from 15 years ago or 15 minutes ago, then it's uh, it's a struggle. But um, I did, I mean, I did enjoy last summer, though, when, you know, Gosden was clearly given a bit of a clip around the year. And then he came out to York and he did, he did what he did on Trawler. And that was uh, an absolute uh, an absolute piece of genius. So uh, it would be fairly apt if he started his... Uh, final meeting at Ascot tomorrow with a win on uh, a draw. He'll be back but... next year, won't he? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> He's never going to retire, is he? It? It's like you two. You'll and never retire. After. Yeah, we can't afford to. Either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if that is money, I'd have been long gone. That's it. Will we go to, will we go to Tom, Tom Siegel in the old people's home? What's that? <laughs> what? What? Ascot? Where's that? <laughs> Frankie, Howard, who are we talking about? <laughs> uh, <but laughs> what's the angle in the champion sprint then, uh, gents? Well, I like, I'm, we're the same. We we're like same. sense of duty. We're, we're, yeah. we're big sense of duty fans. Yeah, I don't think, I just think she's got, a, she's the one with the, the upside in a, in a race that isn't brilliant. Okay. Uh, I'll take run, I think Run to Freedom and Rohan are overpriced on their Ascot form. David? Uh, Millstream and Sandrine each way against the favourite. Okay, lovely stuff. That's the uh, champion sprint. And don't forget those price boosts uh, about uh, Frankie to uh, to ride a few winners. But uh, do not put the five-timer on with Coral, says David Stevens. <laughs> uh, just in case. Uh, next up is the champions, Phillies and Bear Stakes. Uh, group one over a mile and a half here. Uh, and, uh, and Jackie O uh, and Free Wind are seven or two joint favourites here. Five to one time lock, eight to one blue stocking above the curve, nine to one sweet memories, ten to one. Uh, Rue Boissonard is ten to one. Uh, term of endearment is 14 to 1. Uh, we've got Running Lion, Stay Alert, One for Bobby, Poptronic, Red Riding Hood, uh, and Sea of Roses also uh, turning up in this contest, where there has been a bit of money for uh, for Jackie O, uh, but it was free wind. Uh, Keels, he was at the, at the top of the betting, which I was a bit surprised about, uh, given they, they blamed the soft ground for uh, her defeat at, uh, at Goodwood, but mainly because year after year after year, this race gets won by a, an up-and-coming three-year-old, and uh, this morning they had the the exposed five-year-old rock, uh, rock solid at the top of the bedding. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can forgive her the good word because good word was brutal, wasn't it? Like, you know what I mean? But they, they said, then said that she found the ground too fast in France, didn't they? So uh, she's one of those uh, uh, needs it just right, doesn't she? Uh, so yeah, it's one of those races. I think it's a struggle to to name the favourite. I mean, it could well be different now. It's, it's one of those open, really open races, as as difficult as the as the handicap and later on the card. I ended up coming down on the side of one of the three year olds, and that was the other John and Faisley Gosden, John and Fady Gosden, Gosden Fillin, Philly. <laughs> Jesus, I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> where's, that, where's that old people's home? <laughs> exactly. You could have the room Just next round to the me. corner, mate. Just dear, round the corner. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, daughter of, daughter of Rory Lyon, um, who's obviously he, he no longer with us, but had some brilliant results at Ascot this year. Uh, and. I can't get it out of my head the way she smashed up Sumo Sam earlier in the season on, on ground with cutting it at Newmarket. And I thought the ground was way too fast and she went too fast early last time. 
uh, went up to uh, a mile and a four for the first time. And she, obviously she was a long way behind time lock in the end, finished third. But I think we're going to see a different filly on it with a bit, bit of ease in the ground. She probably doesn't need it absolutely bottomless. Uh, and I just thought she's a, she's a big price. She looked really, really promising early in the season on soft ground. Uh, and I'm not buying that run at Newmarket as evidence that she doesn't stay. OK, lovely stuff running lion then. Uh, for uh, Again, Gosden, three-year-olds uh, in a, a race of this nature at Ascot is uh, not a bad way to go in this or the, the Ribblesdale. Uh, a thousand people are currently watching this live, uh, by the, uh, the way, from home, like me. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Cheeky, keep, keep it shut, Prowley. <laughs> Well, They're hardly in here with us, are they? <laughs> Producer Sam's message me to say that it's a thousand people want to see the gentle giant Tom Siegel in the studio. So that's your new tagline coming out. Go on, <laughs> Tom. Um, but uh, speaking of gods and three-year-olds, uh, Mr. Siegel, we've got a, uh, another one in here as well, who, uh, in the shape of sweet memories, who also ran into it at time lot, but looked really impressive on soft ground uh, before that at, uh, at Newmarket. Um, and again, Gosden's done really well in this uh, in this race, and like I said, the Ribblesdale. And I also want y your opinion on blue stocking as well, because she was unlucky in the Ribblesdale. She probably should have won at the current and just got outstayed. I think the ground's absolutely key to her, and that Chester defeat last time out actually looks a bit better in hindsight. Yeah, yeah, she didn't rip. Al Kareem's come out and won again, hasn't he? At uh, was it Ascot? Ascot, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Could be. Uh, I just don't like horses by Camelot Ross. It's, mm. I'm, a, I'm a pedigrees man, and so. You know, I, I, they just don't win enough for me. So she's out. Sweet memories I do like. I thought she was, she hated the ground at Newmarket last time. She was all over the place in the dip. She's got the cheek pieces on tomorrow. And uh, Holly Doyle, who won on her the time before, is back on. I just thought it was, you know, Frankie had no problems going for free wind. I know he can't ride Keels' this one, so that's out the windows. But he, 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 didn't, uh, he didn't even seem to, seem to mention sweet memories when he had the choice. So... I don't know. I think she's got a chance. She was on. She was a tracker horse. Keel's favourite thing for me. So I'm. So I like her as a. I like her as a filler going forward. What I like is time lock. I just think that uh, she looks like a horse, just massively on the upgrade. I really liked her last year when she was just touched off by Haskoy in the Gultree Stakes at York. Yep. I think that's what it's called. Uh, and I just think she sort of lost her way. I think she got jarred up on really firm ground at the start of the season. Uh, last two runs have been her best. She won at Newmarket last time doing, you know, it, it couldn't have been easier. I thought she absolutely pulverised them. Now I get there were excuses for others. I get the ground's going to be different. But she's by Frankel. Frankel's going to have a great day tomorrow. He's got loads of great chance. You can't talk about Ascot without talking about Frankel. And I think uh, she's, she's the one with the upward progression over some that we know where they are sort of thing. Jackie O, I don't really get. Did she run in the Sandringham? Did she run in the uh, Sandringham? She, 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 yeah. yeah, she was six to one favour in the Sandringham. Yeah, she I, I backed 20. her in the Sandringham. She was horrible in the Sandringham. Now, I know this is a different trip. And yeah, I know well, she, she, she might not She might not like the ground, might she? And, yeah. yeah. I mean, the second of Blue Rose Sen was great. Um, uh, obviously, one mile two. She goes up to one mile four for the first time. Aidan O'Brien said, we always hope to run her a mile and a half. Well, why oh, did he? She won <laughs> seven times this season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, to be fair, uh, he's been spoiled for choice, hasn't he? Yeah, with, uh, yeah, 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 it's true. Uh, you know, so, you know, if she stays, she has to be interested because obviously Blue Rose said would be favourite in here, wouldn't she? You know, so... Yeah, she's I mean, she should stay, shouldn't she? I mean, she's, um, she's half, uh, half sister to Secret State, who uh, won a mile and a half to Royal Ascot a couple of seasons yeah. ago. I mean, um, you know, Jacqueline Quest was a, was a, was a Guinea's winner, but she put plenty of stamina into, uh, into, uh, 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 into her progeny, and she's by Galileo, Jackie, as well. I think, yeah, she was, she was terrible at Ascot, Tom, mm. but I, clearly she's improved for that step yeah, up. Yeah, of course. Of course. She, she is, when you say about sense of duty in the first... She is one of those horses. Actually, if she came out and improved for the trip and won by a few lengths, you go, okay, I can kind of, I kind of get that with pedigree. Seven or two fav though, Ross. Nah, yeah. not for me. This is a big. These are better fillies. Obviously, Blue Rose Sen was very good, but apart from her, you know, I wasn't convinced. But I think you got to mention the other French filly, Rue yep. Boissonard. See what I did there? Very good French. I am very good at French. I am. Uh, I thought she she was unlucky last time in the Sea Silk Road race. I thought that was a pretty good run. She got sort of shuffled back to last and then didn't get the clearest to run and stayed on. If the ground is very testing on the new inner track, uh, she could go well, definitely. And I feel sorry for Terman Endearment's uh, connections who supplemented her in for a fortune. 
for hoping that the ground was going to be bottomless and they've moved tracks on her. So, but uh, I thought she was quite interesting if the ground, I mean, it was splashing water up when she won at Cork. So she'll need, she'll need the rain to, to fall for her to have a chance. But I like time lock. I just think she's on the way up and uh, can be better, can be better again. It'd be great okay. then win it for Roger Charlton. That'd be a nice story, yes. wouldn't it? On, on his, yeah. on, uh, you know, with him giving the reins away to his son. Well, I mean, we were saying there's a potential that, you know, there was rumours that it might be uh, the last time we see John Garston uh, uh, on a uh, 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 on a race card this season as well. So you might have your Charltons and your Garstons handing over the uh, the reins uh, to uh, to younger offspring, uh, as it uh, as it were. Uh, but um, okay, David Stevens, what do you got for the uh, the Champions Phillies and mares? Jackie O has been quite well backed. I just could say, by the way, the three year olds, eighty runners in this race, three year olds uh, and ten winners, seventy two old horses have run and only four have won. Uh, and we've got some really talented three-year-olds in here, uh, including uh, Jackie O, Blue Stock in Sweet Memories uh, for uh, for the, the Gosden team. David, Stevens, what do you like? Yeah, wide open race. So we're four places each way. Uh, be no surprise to see Jackie O improve, stepping up in trip, daughter of Galileo. I think she'll probably start favourite, depending if Frankie's ridden the first couple of winners, then she won't. But I think free wind or drift otherwise. Uh, I like the Jub Montpair. Time lock is improving. She'll need to improve again, but that is more than likely. I just why well, I've been following Blue Stocking all year, so I'm perhaps a bit of blind loyalty here, but she's bumped into some good ones. Warm Heart and Save the Last Dance. She runs well at Ascot. Say she was unlucky in the Ribblesdale. She won't mind the softer ground, I don't think. So she'll do for me each one. I'm hoping, I'm hoping she's finally going to get her day in the sun. I mean, I think she's... Uh, how many places were you on this day? Four places, four places each way. I'd be a bit surprised if she's out of the year before. Rafe Beckett re- reaching for the cheap pieces as well. He does like to um, be quite sparing with his uh, with his headgear. So uh, I'd be interested in blue stocking. And, yeah, record on softish ground. She won a novice. She finished second, beating on the line at the Curra, and then second at Chester last time out. The horses come out and win the Cumberland Lodge Stakes next time out. Uh, I'm sure she will come there uh, on the bridle, wander about and get beat on the line. But um, <laughs> I'd be surprised if she's out of the frame at, at eight to one. Uh, so, so there you go. So she'd be my each-way angle for this. Uh, Tom Siegel? Not that one, that's for sure. Uh, time lock for me. Time lock it is. Well, I'll take I'll I'll, I'll take a Judmont forecast. You, yours can beat mine. That's all right as long as she's in the frame, Tom. That's yours right. I'm not yours won't be in the forecast for us. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. There'll be there'll be miles between the two, like there is between me and you right now. Uh, and Keels, what did you uh, what did you make? Of yeah, this? I'm taking a chance with Running Lion at a price. Running Lion it is. And David. Yeah, uh, blue stocking each way for me. We do have a, a price boost on the Irish train runners in this. You've got above the curve as well as the Henry de Bromhead uh, and Jackie O, of course. Irish train winner of this race uh, was 13 to 8, now 2 to 1. But blue stocking each way for me. OK, lovely stuff. What about uh, cheese, sweet, Ross? What about cheese? Any word from cheese? We want another no, cheese from... gag. Cheese has gone very quiet, actually. <sighs> he's, gone, uh, he's gone very, very quiet indeed. Um... Disappointing. It is, isn't it? Mm. It's, uh, it is a bit uh, disappointing. But um, I'm trying to think, I'm desperately trying to think of a cheese joke now, and I can't. Uh, but uh, as for the rest, uh, time lock for uh, for Michael. Uh, it has to be bang there. Uh, Duncan Evans says, how come Tom doesn't have a laptop? Because it's all up there, Duncan. It's all up there. Uh, and uh, what else have we got? Uh, Blue Socking doesn't want to win off world. Uh, but uh, it's true. But there's just something about Rafe Beckett. Jude Montfilly's back end of the season as well. Does she not want to win, or is she just waiting to get the uh, the, the, the Beckett autumn stats uh, up uh, even higher than they already are? Uh, let's move on then to the the 305 at Ascot, the the QE2, of course, and uh, in theory a really really good renewal of this race, which can throw up uh, a little bit of a, a surprise as it did uh, last year, of course, with Bayside Boy, uh, as it did a few years ago with uh, with King of Change. Uh, there have been some uh, shocks in this contest, uh, but it's Paddington. And Tahira, the uh, the three year olds uh, who both won their respective races at Royal Ascot, of course, fifteen to eight and seven to two. Nashua four to one. Big Rock thirteen to two. Chaldean elevens. Factor Cheval twelves uh, and twenty to one. And bigger the rest. Uh, Tom, um, you you weren't entirely convinced about Tahira early on. You haven't been that convinced about Paddington either. Uh, uh, and I'm not sure anyone's been that convinced about Chaldean's Guineas form. Um, but uh, three year olds do tend to do pretty well in this race. And um. You can kind of see why there's a lot of funny results in this kind of contest, Tom, because at this time of the season, I don't know, it's, I'm not saying it's a, it's a really interesting lineup, but you could probably pick holes in, in all of them. Yeah, of course, at the end of the season, isn't it? I mean, it's hard to pick holes in Tahira, to be fair. 
She's, she's, uh, she, I thought she was at her most impressive last time, and I don't think Nashua's done anything wrong at all either. I hate saying that. She, you know, done anything wrong. She's just a really good filly, isn't she? She's, she finished in front of Paddington at York, and she did incredibly well to finish where she did at, at Leopardstown last time. You know, she went flying past King of Steel, who everyone thinks has got a great chance in the Champion Stakes coming up. I don't think, I think, I think they're going to go very hard here. You've got Big Rock and Chaldean that like to go off, off, off hard. I don't think Ryan Moore's going to want to be miles behind on Paddington, considering he's won, hold on a minute, what was that race at Sandown, Dave? I can't remember. Oh, the Coral Eclipse, that one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he won that. Uh, See, I'm getting my bingo card ticked off already. See what I did there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm, not, I'm not coming in it. I'm, I'm not coming in ever again. Tom's much more fun in the studio. <laughs> well, I thought you were going to say he's much better than me in the studio. That's true yeah, yeah, as that, well, yeah. That's true, that as well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think that will go really hard. Uh, Tahira, I, I mean, he says, Dermot Wells says she doesn't really want very heavy ground uh, she, I don't know. She ran very well in the Guineas, didn't it? It was very soft that day. It rained all day. I know it was Newmarket. And I thought she did really well to finish where she as close as she did that day. There were miles clear, the two of them, of Matilda Picot, who we see is a very good horse. I'm not too worried about the ground. I think it's, I think it's a great race. I think we've got all the horses we want there. I just think that Nashua's the underestimated one myself on her form the last twice. I mean, it, Keels has been advocating for... I don't know, since the summer that she's a miler and that she should be running in miles race, mile races. If that's the case, she has run two absolutely blinders in the, in the Judd Monty and the Irish Champion Stakes because to come where she did and beat the horses she has done, given the way she was ridden, uh, she, she, looks a, she looks a top class filly to me. Uh, if they go really hard here, I don't think she'll mind the ground. I could see her picking them up. I think she's got a great chance. Yeah, I mean, you said. I mean, she 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 won the Sun Chariot by five lengths, didn't she? Uh, and, and pulling away as well. Yeah, that was um, a bit of a rubbish old contest, though, wasn't it? it was yeah, yeah, yeah. But she beat Remarco by five lengths. To here, only beat her by a length. Yeah, I think yeah, she's the best true. horse in the race, and she, she'll win. Uh, well, I genuinely mean, do. Kills, I mean, she's a better horse than she's officially a better horse than to, to here. I think almost every single run that Nash has had this season is better than to here's form. Yeah, uh, I don't. Get that Paddington was really below form uh, in the international. I think he ran bang up to form. When you look at the horses he's, he's beaten, I mean, Chaldean, so what? Uh, Emily Upjohn, what's, what's happened to her? Factor Cheval, that was a bang average Sussex. That Sussex run was that Sussex run was worse than the Judd Monty run. Uh, he had to work really. He had to work hard enough to beat some average horses. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's a good. Very, very tough horse. He's not a superstar by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he has been on the drift today because he was a very, very short price earlier on. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't have him at all, to be honest. I, I, th I think Nashua is the best horse of the race, and I think she'll win. I mean, just what she's done on the last two runs with different rides. She could have won both of those. What price would she be then? She'd be running in the champion stakes. Yeah, she'd, she'd be running in the champion stakes. <laughs> yeah. She'd be running in the champion stakes. She'd be six. She'd have been six to four for that. Yeah. But yeah, but with different rides. I mean, you know, Tom thought she should have won the international. Yeah. Uh, you could certainly make a case for saying she should have won the, the Irish champion stakes, given how much she was given to do and how many horses she had to go past to, to get within half a length for the winner. So. Yeah, I just think she has the best form, and she's better than them. Um, she's funny, isn't she? She's just underrated, isn't she? She is underrated. They'll go fast, uh, like Tom's already alluded. That'll suit her down to the ground, because, she, you know, even even when she ran at a mile, she, she can be keen. Uh, it doesn't seem to bother a, a finishing effort. But I think, you know, a really stiff mile on soft ground, which I think I think she handles perfectly well. I just don't think she gets home over a mile and two on it. Mm. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't have a beat. I really can't. She's my, you know... Frank Court, but another me. Frank Court. Yeah, yeah. I mean, never mind, uh, Tom. The the Frankie multiples. You want to be putting Frank Court multiples uh, tomorrow, don't you? I would, uh, that's probably a better angle. Yeah, I think so. I think you've got loads of chance. We'll come off to onto Mostadaf in a minute. He's got a good chance in the last, and he's got Time Lock. He's got Nashua. He's got loads of good, got loads of loads of great chances. Probably forgotten yeah. a few as well. He's, uh, he's got a couple in the Coalfield Cup as well. You could have a right all day mm. uh, if you, if you yeah. stick them all in. But, but, watching uh, the telly. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, son. Um, <laughs> and son and daughter and son. Uh, Paddington fifteen to eight. There to here a seven to two. Nashua four to one. Big Rock for 13, uh, 13 to two. And Chaldean uh, eleven to one. Bidding to bounce back after that disappointing run in France. Uh, what about the the QE two for you? Are you contractually obliged to say that actually Paddington has been an absolute? <laughs> 
superstar this year, David Stevens. Well, obviously, he has been an absolute superstar, uh, winning the great race. <laughs> but no, listen, I'm, I'm going to give a full house to Nash Run Kills. You mentioned that the line through Remarque. I mean, Tahira beat Remarque a length. That was off level weights. Nashua, when she beat her five lengths, was giving her nine pounds in the Falmouth. So I think she's, yeah, she's by far uh, got the beating of this. She finished ahead of Paddington at York as well. Um, I say she on a, on a line through Remarque. She beats Tahira. Big rock. You can't win a QE2 making all. It's going to be fascinating to see what Aurelian Lemaitre tries to do. Not a lot he can do. I think the horse will, will take him out there. So, yeah, I'm... I'm Going to join the Nashua party, full house for the uh, for the filly. Okay, yeah, lovely stuff. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't I wasn't entirely sure. I was a bit worried about her lack of Ascot form, but I mean, she, yeah, maybe maybe she's been a mile all along. I mean, she's won two races over a mile by a combined distance of about twelve lengths, hasn't she? So, um, so yeah, maybe. Okay, yeah, fair enough. You've you've convinced me, guys. You've convinced me. I'm in. Let's do it. Let's full house Nashua. Let's do it. Fair enough. All right. Uh, as for everyone at home, Chi says is back. He says Paddington wins easily. Um, Nashua received a shocking ride in uh, in one race as Rocket Man. I, I think he might mean the uh, Irish champion. Um, agree with Nashua, says Jim Stanton. Tahira and Big Rock for Mark uh, Keo uh, and uh, uh, David Foster says Tahira is good. Uh, they should save it for the Breeders. Cup mile, uh, but uh, yeah, that's the other QE too. Uh, um, what's uh, what's been your race of the season, Paul Keeley? Uh, that'd be last week. The shunter getting up to win the says. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's. I can only remember about that far back exactly. at my age, <laughs> and I backed the winner. So there you go. That's it. All right. And uh, and and t- I mean, we, uh, it's an unexpected connection between your answers. I think if I know what you're going to say, Tom Siegel. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say, Ross. Help. You remember the you remember the conversation we had before the show? Your favourite flat. Oh, race my favourite flat race of the season. Oh yeah, the Cheltenham Bumper. A dream to share. <laughs> That was fun, wasn't it? That was a month. that was one of the better races on the flat this season. Yeah. So you're saying that the best flat races of the season have both been won by jump horses. Yep. 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 Uh, David Stevens, what's uh, what's your favourite race of the season? I'll bring it back to reality. Um, the King George was a brilliant horse race between oh, two gutsy, classy Jim Crowley, animals. tick him off. But 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 <laughs> the race of the season is the race of the season. Most years, because it's the best race in the world. It's the Ark, run by a true, won by a true champion in Ace Impact. Six runs, starting at Kenya Sumer in January, ending in October in Paris. Shame we're not going to see him again, but yeah, it's got to be the That's Ark. That's flat racing for you. That is, that is. Whereas uh, the jumpers, they do everything, don't they? They come back and win the, the flat races. They go fences, hurdles. Uh, they've got all sorts of stuff going on but I tell you what the jump season is just around the corner guys so don't you worry Tom Siegel is going to, he loves it so much he's going to be in the studio every week uh, but um, moving on the Champion Stakes is uh, is next year the 3.45 at, at, at Ascot on Champions Day at Mostadaf 3-1 to one favourite King of Steel 4-1 to one. Horizon Door 4-1 to one. Bay Bridge is 5-1 to 8-1 to one. Via Sestina Royal Rhyme and My Prospero are 12-1 to one. Point Lonsdale is the 20-1 uh, shot uh, here uh, uh, the outsider is uh, is Jibai uh, honour at a much bigger price for William Haggis and James Doyle. Uh, but uh, again, another fascinating lineup and a race that we do often have a surprise in as well, especially when the ground gets uh, really bad. Obviously, by you getting turned over last uh, year by Bay Bridge, Seal Away popping up at a big price as well. Fascinating rock and a Dave also uh, going in at uh, a decent odds. But um, uh, the uh, we've got some cracking horses in here, including last year's winner, of course, uh, Bay Bridge, Tom Siegel. Um, however, we do have what? The best horse over this trip uh, in the in the world in the shape of uh, of Mustard Aff. and correct me if I'm wrong, but if the ground isn't as soft as we we think it's going to be tomorrow, um, is three to one not an absolute steal of a price? It could be. He's not. I don't know. Is he really that good, Mustard Aff? I don't know. I could be wrong. I just have him. I just got some back history with him. I thought he got a very very good ride at York. Uh, I'm not convinced it was a brilliant race, but he got a very good ride. Uh, I think the race at Ascot completely fell apart when he won the Prince of Wales is an, uh, at a big price. Um, he was a big price that day. I think it was 20 to 1 to win that in the morning. I think they started much shorter when the Shrewdies worked out that everything else had half their legs on, on, were falling, or half their wheels were, were not working, were punctured. So, uh, so yes, he could be. Uh, no, I wouldn't back him at three to one. He's not. He's not my 
type of horse really it's hard to say considering he's won two of the best mile and a half races in the world but quarter. in the, but uh mile and a quarter, he's also yeah. he's also by by frankel he is by uh, frankel he is by frankel he does like ascot he's got a lot, lot going from king of steel i thought it's about the right price nothing more nothing less i could see him shortening with frank with being frankie's last ride but uh, he ran very well in the, didn't stay in the King George, did he, on soft ground here. Mile and a quarter, I think, might be his trip. I was a little bit disappointed with him. Nashua ran, ran clean past him, didn't he? Didn't she at Leopardstown last time? Uh, maybe the ground will, will help him, but, you know, I don't know. For, for, you know. I don't know. I don't know about him. Horizon Door's just a bad price, or was a bad price. He's getting back to a better price. I mean, the form, the form that he's got is nowhere near good it's nowhere near Mostadaf or King of Steels or Bay Bridges or half of these and he was you know I'm not even sure it's that much better than Royal Rhymes or you know horses like that I mean it might be a couple of pounds better but not much but he was a very very short price I think he's I think he might drift out to a price that is more realistic whether it's still right I don't know Bay Bridge won it last year I'm not totally I think there's every chance of an upset I really do I still think that Via Sistine has got a race in her if the ground's very soft and I think the two 12 to 1 shots, Royal Rhyme and My Prospero, could easily run big races. Royal Rhyme reminds me of My Prospero, who came into the race last year, similar profile, ran third. Uh, I could see him, the softer the ground, the better for him. He's unbeaten on soft ground. The form of his Goodwood win is really good. I know it was only a handicap, but you know, the horses don't win races that competitive that easily unless they're, they're pretty near top class. So I give him a shot, and I think My Prospero could easily bounce back with the. With all the headgear added, and you know, back in back after a confidence booster last time, so I think there's a chance of an upset here. I think I think you know I'm not entirely convinced by any of them at the top of the market. Okay, uh, yeah, and that's uh, producer Sam says that you put Royal Rhyme up uh, anti post at sixty six to one. Uh, so um, you'll be hoping Mostert and well. I'm hoping, that, I'm hoping he wins. I'm hoping he wins for no. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what he was hoping um, for weirdly was to get no rain. So the ground exactly. would be softer on Saturday than it will be now because they've switched tracks. Yeah, I wasn't, yeah. wasn't happy about the weird, track switch. Uh, way of looking at it. But yeah, if it hadn't rained, it well, um, would have had a, a better chance because the ground would have been softer than it now will be. Um, but uh, yeah, but he did. Uh, he won that the air race which Adebe won before coming on to to win this as well. And obviously Adebe was a, uh, a six-year-old and. Royal yeah, Ryan and he did, he did really well to to, to pull back uh, a leader who got the run of the race massively. Mm. Uh, and none of the others got anywhere near him. So it was a really, really good run. He's a massive player. I just slightly went off him because I could see what was going to happen with uh, um, with with the ground and, and, and the tracks and all that. So the one I backed anti post was my Prospero because uh, I, I just think he's more versatile. Um, he's getting the blinkers treatment for the first time. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a plus that is. I mean, he's always looked like he, he looks like he needs them. But William Haggis doesn't actually have a great record uh, with first-time headgear in comparison to his overall record. Uh, his strike rate is still pretty good because he's William Haggis, but I mean, it's, it's, you know, it, it, they certainly don't have a record of improving for headgear for him. Um, but I do think on his best form, you know, he, he's been, you know, he was a neck third in the St James's Palace last year. He's beaten half a length in this race last year. I think, you know, I, I think he's got a good, a good solid each way chance. And like Tom said, you can you can pick holes in the ones at the front. I will say that, you know, I, I, were we in danger of making too much of Mossadov not handling soft ground anyway? Mm. I mean, did he just not yeah. stay in Paris? I mean, before well, then, he was two from two on soft ground. And and at the time he was running, ran big career bets both times. Well, uh, and this is a so, big thing I was going to say to you, Kiels, as well, is that um, not only that, but he's related to Nazif, who won the Sun Chariot on heavy ground, and the Dam won a really good race, I think a listed race for a Group 3, in, in very soft ground as well. So, yeah, I mean, you know, he's, you know, his career best form was all one mile two, so he's running the arc on very, very soft ground and not stayed, is he not? not you know, just yeah, it's a gauzy special, isn't it? Simple as that. It's so, a gauzy special, he's, you, you know. So I think he's a, I think he's a massive player. I, I, I get Tom's case for Via Sistina as well. I thought she was a tad on the short side. Mm. She's just she's just in again now. There's lots of been, been lots of market moves in there, but I was I was just my Prospero each way. Okay, my Prospero is a twelve to one shot. Then Royal Ryan giving a good talk. Up Via Sistina's got a squeak as uh, well. Last year's winner Bay Bridge Horizon Door. Same connections as Sealy Way from a couple of years ago. And like I said, I think. I, don't, I, don't, I still don't. I think if they knew Mossadaf was running, the new ground was fine. I think it'd be seven or four, two to one, wouldn't it? Not three to one, but anyway. It might uh, David be Stevens. By the end of the day. It might be. Yeah, yeah, it is possible. Or or a big um, 
NR next to his name and you get your money back anyway. So, uh, David Stevens, what did you make of the champion stakes this year? Yeah, this has been the most lively market because of the ground. I mean, less than 48 hours ago, Mostadaf was a 10 to 1 chance when we thought it was perhaps going to be on, on the very heavy course. He wouldn't have run in that case anyway, I don't think. Uh, obviously, spoke to Jim Crowley for his blog, which is up on the Coral website. But I think they will still have a good look at the track tomorrow. Speak to the jockeys that ride in those couple of races. I think probably memories of Baye's defeat last year still sort of fresh in their mind. They do have the Breeders' Cup turf as an option for Mostadaf. I think if he wins, he'll start a pretty short favourite. As I say, even today, he's shortened and shortened into to clear favouritism. Now, I think he's the best 10 furlong performer around. No question at all. I think beating Paddington and Nashra at York is, is top class form. So I say, if he runs, I think he'll take all the beating. King of Steel, I like. I think the form with August Rodin at Leperstown End at Epsom is pretty good. The French horse, as we said, doesn't have anywhere near the Group 1 form at the moment. He, he might just be good enough. I think we've yeah, we've seen some good, some really good French horses this year, obviously led by his impact. And, and we're sort of taking it that, that Horizon Door might be might be better than he actually is. Bay Bridge, if the arc hasn't taken too much out of him, has to have a chance. Last year's winner, of course. Um, but yeah, for me, if Mostadaf runs, he's the best 10 furlong performer out there and he'll win. And if they don't deem the ground good enough, then obviously we're not going to lose anything anyway. Okay, there we go then, the, the champion stakes. That's for everyone at, at home. Horizon door easy win, says, uh, says Off World. Uh, Via Sestina has a chance with Spencer out, says uh, Off World as well. Point Lonsdale on beaten on soft ground, Stevens 929. Uh, and uh, and Daniel McCrossan says, go on the lads, three sound fellas. <laughs> Thanks ever so much, Daniel. I'm not going to ask you uh, uh, who the one who uh, you don't consider a sound fella is. Uh, uh, and uh, just get uh, selections, champion stakes, please, Tom Siegel. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I'm on Royal Rhyme. I've, I've been, as you know, with him. I think Horizon Door's quite interesting. The sectionals boys say he ran the same sort of last three furlongs at Longchamp as Ace Impact. He was very, very fast over the last three. So I wouldn't rule him out. I think he's a bad price. But I think if, you get, if he drips out to six or seven to one, he's, he's very interesting. But it's uh, hopefully the ground will be testing or soft and Royal Rhyme might be the one. And Keels? Uh, my Prospero for me. OK, there we go. Let's move on then to the Balmoral, the final race of the, uh, the day. Just the 20 runners here uh, over the, uh, the straight mile. Where will they go? Will they come near side? Will they go far side? Will they come down the middle? Will we have four groups, three groups, two groups? Uh, who knows, uh, quite frankly. Uh, but uh, Docklands, uh, who uh, was disappointed at Goodwood, but very impressive at Royal Ascot, of course, is 6-1 to one favourite. Migration, 7-1. to one. Sonny, less than 7-1. to one. Baradar, 15-2. to two. Alma Beer, 8s. Awal, 9s. Her door is 12 to 1, Latam 14s, uh, and bigger prices the rest. Loads of old favourites in here. Your Pedros, your, your Rada Bargs, Ross Golin, of course, uh, Paul Keeley, as your, your heart starts to flutter. Uh, blue for you, a dual identity, of course. That's a top my, seagull. Mm, my, heart starts to, my heart starts to flutter at half of these. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. In fact, I better stop going down the field, uh, Keels, because it might stop if we get down to the, uh, the outsiders. Uh, but uh, yeah, Docklands. I thought I thought he was off to Australia, but he's maybe they abandoned that plan. They've come back to it. The Ascot for the the Balmoral, an unexposed three-year-old. But what's your angle in the uh, Saturday's big handicap deals? Uh, well, uh, stalls are on the far side. They have made a habit uh, of going to the far, far side. All of them, uh, which is probably why there's only one horse uh, won this in the last ten years from a stall higher than eleven. So that was that was half my angle. I mean. I thought Migration would have won the race last year if he'd have stayed where he was, but I mean, they just decided not to. So he, he's, he's drawn in the middle now. 11 becomes 10 because one of the reserves was 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 drawn in one. Uh, he won the Lincoln very easily. I know he's six pound higher still, but he's one of those soft ground, big field mile. He goes through it better than most. Uh, he just travels really strongly. If he gets a run, I know he's running off 113. I think he's got to be a massive player. And I think Rado Barg was my other one. He's drawn in six. He ran behind Highland Avenue at Newmarket last week. And now he, he's a proper, proper soft ground horse. Won a silver bowl at, at Haydock and heavy ground uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, and uh, as, as one on Tipperary heavy and he's won, he's won soft ground races. Uh, and he's been making a run in a loads of group races for the best part of two years, but he showed how well suited he was to a big field handicap when, when he absolutely hacked up in the Irish Lincoln, big first run last year. Uh, and I think going back into a big field handicap, it could be the class. I, mean, I remember Tom was tipping equilateral when he won at, uh, at York uh, at the Eber meeting. Uh, 
as a class act going back in a handicap, and this is his first run in a handicap for nearly two years. And I think it could be interesting because uh, the ground is certainly going to be more in his favour this time. OK. Uh, and Tom, what did you pick out? Uh, yeah, I'd obviously get the case for migration. It'd be interesting. I don't know if Hayley Turner had a winner today or whatever, but I think she's on 998. Docklands is, uh, or she was on 998, but I think she's looking to get 1,000. I think that was the plan with Docklands. But uh, I don't know about him on the grounds track too. He could get stuck in traffic there. Uh, who knows? Migration's got a very good chance. Yeah, it's in it, yeah. I mean, Doc Docklands won by a mile on soft ground in did, May. Yeah. But he was rated 80 and it wasn't a very good race. Miles and better performance at Ascot. Miles better performance at Ascot on fast ground, and he, well, he just didn't look to like it at all at Goodwood, did he? So uh, that would be that would be the worry with him. I think Albu Mubir's got a chance, Ross. Uh, I see mm -hmm. he's been back there. I just thought another Frankel. I think William Haggis got a great record. Aldari won it. Sweet Believer was second last year. Really unlucky, I thought. Problem with him is he's right on the outside, stall 23, even though there are only 20 runners, but he's in stall 20, he's right on the outside. He'll need a while who is drawn close by, I think, to go really hard to get him into the race. But I do think he's got a big race in him, Al Moob here. The other one I thought had a good chance was the Irish trained Cordor, who has won two of the biggest Irish mile handicaps the last time he's run over a mile, the one at Galway and the Irish Cambridgeshire. I don't think he stayed last time at uh, wherever it was, for Curra again over 10 furlongs, he's back to a mile, soft ground. Dermot World has a brilliant record at Ascot, so they would be my two, but I, I mean, migration looks looks like he's got a great chance. I would say, though, that he's, he's, while he's six pounds up, Benoit de la Sayette could, could claim, I think, in the Lincoln, and I don't think he can now. Mm. So I think there's another three pounds. Yeah, another three pounds on top. Another three pounds right, on. Yeah. yeah, that is true. Yes, that he is could. True. Yes, he could. Uh, yeah, just to throw a few more, but yeah, the, yeah, the, the Irish Raider is a little bit interesting. Tom, I mean, they don't send that many over here, do they? But Neword won this a couple of seasons ago, and you know, horses. What the, Mickey Halford won the uh, the Hunt Cup a few years, about 10, yeah. 11 years ago, with a similar type as well, didn't he? But uh, there are a few at a big prices. The one that I, keep, I kept looking at and going a bit mad looking at him was was Ropey Guest, um, who has spent his entire life running over seven furlongs. Yeah, he won at York over a mile earlier on in the season. Uh, he won at Yarmouth on soft ground over a, a mile a couple of seasons ago. As a two-year-old, he was third uh, behind Military March in the Autumn Stakes over a mile. He was third in the Henry Cecil uh, behind Elsa Hale over a mile. Um, I think they've been running him over the wrong trip his entire career. 40 to 1, I think he is. Yeah, he's a big price, and he was doing his best work at the end behind Atrium last time, wasn't he? 6 to 17. Uh, yeah, you can definitely see the case for that. He's a, he's a bit of a character, isn't he? But uh, mm. uh, he finally got the big win that, that he deserved at York. Um, so yeah, I can I, I can see the case with him at a price. Yeah, well, is he a bit of a character? Well, like I said, has he just been screaming "run me over a mile" all his season, all his career? But uh, David Stevens, uh, the Balmoral, the final race on Champions Day, please. What do you got? Yep, five places each way. Uh, typically competitive, as you'd expect, for it's worth a whole chunk of money. Um, wouldn't be one I could get too heavily involved in, but the Dermot Wild runner did stand out. Uh, Ten furlongs didn't appear to get home last time. Back over a mile. Got form winning big field handicaps. Won't mind testing ground. I say Dermot Ware wouldn't be bringing too many over. So, cur door for me. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll have an advert in a second and the naps as well. But uh, finally, in a sentence, Tom Siegel, who's your horse of the season uh, that's actually, you know, strictly a flat horse? Uh, I think the older horses have been much of a muchness, so I'm going to go for the two-year-old, City of Troy. I liked him the other day. I think he's the most exciting horse that's run on the flat this season. Okay, Paul Keeley. Couldn't argue with that, but I'm going to go for Nashua because she's going to win tomorrow, uh, and that'll do for me. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'm going to go for I'm going for Chindit. <laughs> I think he's had a great year. Chindit. He's had a lovely time, hasn't he? Every week or two, he's like he said. At the end of this year, I'm off to I'm off to stud in India, and everyone's like, oh, lovely. Uh, and he just goes out and runs another big race. So fair play to Chindit, David Stevens. Well, I'd obviously have to say Ace Impact just because he won the world's greatest flat race. But aside from him, let's go for Shaquille. A bit of a forgotten horse now, but the way he won the Commonwealth Cup and the July Cup doing everything wrong was quite extraordinary. Not sure what his future is, but hopefully Shaquille might be back for more next year. No, that's true. Or, or he might go off to stud and uh, breed the next generation of Commonwealth Cup winners, eh, Tom? What a shambles. <laughs> <laughs> Champions Day naps after this advert. You spoke, we listened.
Introducing race cards redefined. Three brand new and unique race cards tailored for your needs. Our new and improved standard race card is the punter's favorite and is everything you need to make your selection. Get the maximum amount of information in the palm of your hand with expert view. Cover all areas and get all the same information as our newspaper. With Compact View, you can make a quick decision on who to back. View more runners and more odds on one race. Which race card will you choose? There we go. Thank you for that public information, Phil. Uh, and now it's time for the naps. Uh, Tom Siegel, Champions Day nap, please. OK, let's do that again because we forgot to put the mic up. OK, lovely stuff. Thanks for that. Champions Day nap started with you, Tom. Can I give a different one now? Oh, no. Time, time, time lock in the Phillies race. Time lock it is. Paul Keeley. Mashua wins the QE2. OK, uh, I think Mostadaf wins the champion stakes. What do you think, David Stevens? Well, I was going to go Nashua, then I was going to go Mostadaf. Haven't really left me a lot. I'll go blue stocking in the Philly and Mares to be placed. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Lovely stuff. You could have just gone for the, uh, the, the each way double on the other two you liked as well. But uh, thank you, uh, David. Thank you, Paul Keeley. Thank you, Tom Siegel. I'm sorry, mate. I'm genuinely so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so, me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But You're not back... sorry at all, Ross. You're not. I am. I really am. I'm, I'm mainly because I spent so much money on taxis and didn't go anywhere. But apart from that, I am very sorry. I mean, look, look I, I can't believe I didn't get to give Tom Siegel a hug, and I never will. I'll never see you in <laughs> you, person. You're damn right, you never will now, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Enjoy Ascot tomorrow, uh, and yep. we'll see you for more of the same uh, where the, uh, the roles will be reversed, and I'll maybe come into the studio uh, uh, next time around. But uh, enjoy the weekend. See you on the other side.